Let's see. Now it's working. Good, good, good. So for today, please tell me about yourself, your background. I saw Hi. on your Facebook already a lot of stuff. Okay. Um, yeah, um, you have like a triple background. You went to St. Andrews University, right? Codarts, and also you studied biology or something? Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, it's it's great. I mean, so I, I first um, studied in Germany um, at the University of Tübingen, um, biology and geography. And then I, um, from there, I then I got a PhD offer in St. Andrews. Um, so then I did a PhD in St. Andrews and um, was working a little bit there for a postdoc. And then at the completely wrong age, I studied dance for a year at the Scottish School of Contemporary Dance, <laughs> but I was already in my late twenties then. <laughs> um, and then I began to kind of develop my own choreographic work around that time, like already in the late um, PhD years, mostly by working with student groups at the University of St. Andrews. And we had a local theater, which was quite accessible at the time. So that really allowed me to gain my first choreographic experience and make some productions there. Um, yeah, then I studied, I did a year of dance training, um, but then I came back and worked actually in academia again in biology. Um, and maybe I should say my area in biology is I, I work in bioacoustics. Mm. Um, so I work on how animals use and are affected by sounds and mostly in the ocean. So I mostly work on marine mammals. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, then but then I also developed my arts practice um, and um, be, um, yeah, then I moved to Edinburgh at some point and, for, and there I did a bit of uh, directing for theatre. So kind of moved away from my original kind of um, um, interest in the arts, which um, may, maybe a bit. But then also uh, during the pandemic, I kind of really started to look more into outdoor practices and um, do work around on trees or around trees. And you probably saw a little bit of that in um on the Vimeo side and yeah and then I think it was just second lockdown I was I got stranded in Germany for a couple of months because there was no travel at the time and there's no point of getting back to Edinburgh anyway so then I kind of um thought well maybe I'm gonna apply for this um MA program and I knew that I mean my background wasn't as streamlined but I really kind of liked the concept of it and that it's research-based and um yeah, and then I applied and um, actually got in. And now I've been doing the comma program for the last year and a half. Wow, so you're almost graduating, actually. Then. Yeah, it's it's actually quite scary. And <laughs> if I'm perfectly honest, I still have a big, some big logistical problems to sort for my piece. Um, because, yeah, it's festival, comma festival in end of May. Yeah, that's quite soon. I'm also yeah. graduating this May. It's and a bit scary. It's a yeah. bit scary. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of things to do, and we only have two months or yeah, something. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> More or less, yeah. March, April, yeah. Yeah, but we can do it. We can do it. And, and what program are you in, uh, David? Yeah, I'm doing the best in composition. I'm oh, last yeah, year. Really? Yeah. Yeah, great. Really, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. So, so maybe you are also you... graduating this year. Yes, I am. Uh, but uh, yeah, I will not study anymore because I also studied another bachelor before, also composition in uh, Bucharest. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, eight years is enough for me because I think I can learn by myself or yeah. just meet with you guys, I guess, if I want yeah, to learn more. Yeah, of course. I mean, eight years is a long time, yeah. And did you study classical music in Bucharest or was it composition as well? Or yeah, it was combined. It was everything, and here is also everything. Okay, yeah, something like that. Huh. Yeah, I mean, I could see from from your um, from your examples on on YouTube that it actually includes it. It spans a range of different genres, right? Right. It's not. It's not like, yeah. I mean, it's interest. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, we should definitely meet when you are here. Yeah, I, I will definitely let you know. I mean, next time will be for the... Well, actually, no, I think because I think I'll probably be back before like late March or early April. So um, then, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, my uh, you also got the research fund, right? Yes. Yeah. And you combine it with the thesis, or is it a separate project? It, I mean, I also combine. I mean, we don't have to write a thesis for this program, no. but they call it the research report, or it's kind of called an exposition. So yeah. we, we go on the research catalog and we create an ex exposition there. Yeah, I mean, there will be overlap, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, for sure. I mean, initially, I tried to pitch it a bit differently because my study facilitator said, oh, it cannot be the same. But that now I talked to Eric and he said, ah, this is it's fine if they uh, like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, I was already working on a different project for my research thesis. And this project, which I'm doing with... Um, with the research fund is totally different. So I work on oh, two different okay. researches at the same time and it's exciting. Yeah. Um, and this one, the research fund, uh, my team is about, maybe you remember from the presentation, yeah, a multidisciplinary performance, raising ecological awareness. And uh -huh. scrolling through your Facebook, I also saw that you are super interested in it. So I thought maybe yeah. we'll do like a crosstalk about that. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm very interested in it. I mean, I remember you you gave an example um, in your uh, presentation that you were also interested in using, you know, the electrical signals that you get in plants, and you were using that as a as a, as a starting point for inspiration for your composition. Yeah, that's right. I was uh, an artist in residence last summer, and I worked with a device that measured the electricity in different plants in a garden here in Zeeland, and yeah, what can I say? The pumpkin didn't say much, let's say. <laughs> yeah, that's one. But the cucumber was very active, let's say. Uh -huh. A lot of electricity. So, yeah, I looked at this data a little bit on my laptop. And then I decided, how can I use it to make music with it? And then I assigned different instruments and different notes per electrical spike. So one spike, the note, and then we have all these notes because it's the symphony of the garden, because I worked with like i don't know 10 plants 10 different plants and yeah the vegetables are basically part of the plant so uh yeah and i created this uh, music of the garden and then i applied with this project as a starting point for the research fund and they said yeah it's cool and that's one thing but now i met with scientists which are actually plant uh, physiologists and also uh, the the expert in genes uh, yesterday yeah and they gave me a lot of input that i can also use uh, so i have the plants i also have two circus artists and they oh. can interact with the plant i can put the ring like, uh, like a midi ring and they modulate the sounds from the plant with their movement so that's one ah. thing yeah and also i was thinking also about the water to use water in in the performance so like an aquarium and i put an, a microphone an underwater microphone in it and then yeah. like a small instrument there like a like a percussion kind of thing and then they also modulate the sound of the water with their with their interaction so that's oh yeah that's, so super, far. that's super interesting and another thing that comes to mind actually with with underwater sound because there is a whole range of underwater sounds that are quite um yeah that are quite unexpected like from everyday kind of uh, things that you wouldn't expect make that sound one for example is and you could maybe do that in your aquarium even if you put a bit of sand and if it's a kind of coarse sand and it has shingles in it you know like the broken down shells you yeah. could probably get it from the beach you know just yeah. broken down shells and if you then create a bit of current and they move they make a really kind of interesting sound wow i never thought about that that's really good input actually yeah this is why i need you guys i think that yeah it's i mean because i i listen to also i mean if you're interested i also have a lot of sounds of animals underwater but i don't know that's maybe another a layer that doesn't make too much sense because you're more like um yeah i mean i think that's probably a different thing yeah. well if you are willing to share it please do because i just put everything in it because i just okay. like it yeah so please do uh, so th this is about my research, let's say now to your research. Okay. I remember um, that you do something with the uh, patterns in nature, something yeah. like this. Tell me more about that. Yeah, I mean, I think my in initial interest were in fact patterns. 
and how they are created, right? And and when, in science, we look a lot at, at what are the underlying processes um, or mechanisms that create these patterns. And I was wondering, how can I use that in, in choreographic practices? Mm -hmm. But then also when I looked at that, I think the broader topic is, is actually less about the patterns, but more about emergence. Mm -hmm. And an emergence means that um, complexity arises from very simple interactions between the agents of a system, right? So, so the reason why there's a complex pattern is because there is very simple interactions between um, and then, yeah, between the different agents, but then the sum is more than their parts and the immersion systems has property that are more than just what you would predict or see from the interactions between the different parts. Uh, so, so that's kind of, and also this often means that emergent systems in nature can be leaderless systems. They are more like follow your neighbor systems. Very classical examples is the flocking behavior of birds. For example, if you look at a, a, a flock of starling, and the murmurations it creates in the air and like darker, brighter pattern, they all follow three very simple rules, like, right? They kind of, they try to, um, they keep, I mean, yeah, they, 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 they try to not get too close to their neighbors, also not to get too far away. So they try to keep the same distance all the time and they align in the same direction as their neighbors. And that's enough. Then with the environment creating a structure and then them responding to it, it creates these kind of murmuration, murmurating patterns. And not you know no individual starling is knows what um like what to how to create this overall pattern but it's responding to its neighbors and in doing so the pattern emerges that's a simple example or um yeah so i did also that i did in choreography there's also other examples for example then if you do a flocking score with dancers for example you can also add like basic forms of what they would call distributed thinking uh, in science, so basically it means, for example, um, I create a pattern on the floor, I, I drop a silk on the floor, like it creates a pattern. And then um, if you if one of the movers steps on that pattern, they move slow. If they are on, not on it, they move fast. And then if you add the flocking rules, then that means that the whole um, flock um, homes in onto this pattern. And that would be like, for example, a flock of fish finding food. So these are the very kind of literal in in into um translations so i generally look at yeah what is what how do natural systems work and how can i transpose or translate this into improvisation scores and then i see what happens there but i also realized very quickly that of course this is all about the interactions between the different dancers and movers so it's also important that i work and think more about what are the individual agents or the individual dancers or movers actually doing and what is driving them so I, I i kind of realized that i need to also work more with kind of from the inside out more with internal states and experiences so i use some somatic approaches to kind of work on the individual movement material more and now i think i also realized that sticking too strict to kind of the, the principles is kind of constraining it a bit too much so now i i'm kind of opening up a bit more I'm also really interested in, in relating to each other, for example, in symbiotic systems in nature, right? That's another big interest I have. And that's also very close to what, what you're interested in, right? I mean, this um, the, the symbiotic relationships between trees and fungi, for example, is, is really fascinating, right? So they have these mycorrhizae, and it basically means the fungus is very good at collecting water and nutrients because it's really small and can creep through the soil. And then um, the plant is obviously food, doing photosynthesis. So it's turning what we breathe out, carbon dioxide into sugars. So they do ex uh, they exchange and it works for both of them, but that's not all of it. They also, the fungus also connects the tree into an underground network of, of communication. For example, if one tree gets hit by an insect plague, there is apparently some way they can communicate over the fungus because the other tree then does switches its defense mechanism on. So there's actually, and that may also, it's not understood at all how it works, but that's also part possibly electric, but we don't know yet. So that's why I thought like was super interesting with your stuff as well. <laughs> yeah, thanks for sharing. When I listened to this kind of things last year, when I discovered that all the plants in the trees, uh, they are in this symbiotic relationship with the root system, with the fungi, yeah. I was like, how, how so? I didn't know for 
all this time, but I guess I'm not in the science domain. I'm just this guy playing piano or something. But it's but really it's, fascinating. It's relatively new. You know, I I stumbled across this by chance because when I was at university, it was it's really ironic. We actually had at at, at a biology student, we had a department that was spe specializing in fungi. So they and they were actually researching these mycorrhizae. But at the time, everyone thought it's all about the exchange between the fungus and and the tree, and it is. But no one had no one thought about the fact that the fungi might connect the trees. That was not known. That's fairly recent. That's only ten years old, I think. That finding. Wow! Yeah, impressive. Yeah. So there is more to find out, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So. Back to your research, you said that you create this kind of scores where you implement this information into the performance. Uh, what kind of scores do you produce? Tell me about that. Yeah, yeah. Um, so when I, when I say score, for example, a flocking score could be very simple. I might start with just teaching everyone in the group some a very simple movement motif, which they, which they can use to move around in the space. Then um, the first the first rule, rule that you then introduce is, for example, attraction. So you're, if you come across someone in the space, you attracted them and you stick together. It, so eventually the whole group will come together, but they are still not flocking really. Then they also start to align in the same direction as their neighbors or so face. And then the, then the first patterns begin to emerge, for example. And then you can you can modify this in, in many ways. And for example, I add a predator, you know, so I say like someone tried to attack the flock and they have to really move away. And then this creates this kind of patterns of um, spreading out and coming together again. And, and that's that's a very basic score. I've also done other scores like um, with that are more based on transformation. So depending on who you encounter in the space, it's more like in an ecosystem predation, right, which balances things out. Um, so, for example, if you encounter someone who is the predator, then you have to transform and you become the predator. And then different. And, and I normally quote this with movement material. So each species has its own kind of specific way of locomotion, of moving, of of um, going through space, and um, and 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 the, the the material itself comes more like from somatic approaches um for example i sometimes internal visualizations imagery i use a lot for that um for the for the to create the actual material but sometimes also um actually i also experimented a bit with music recently because i had a group of chinese students for a project and uh they, they were i really didn't get my scores across well verbally to them so then I kind of brought imagery in and also I worked a bit with my partner who works in musical theater and she um, she basically composed some music for me or just improvised some music and then I took that into rehearsal and she came to a rehearsal and she was responding to the score as well and then kind of we set the music based on that. So I've also explored that kind of thing a bit. But often the score is something that uh, gives the, the movers rules about their own movement material and and what happens if they encounter others and how they respond to them. And there are most of the times verbal guidelines. It's not like a framework on a paper or something. Can no, it I mean it can either be verbal guidelines, but I have also made these kind of briefing cards where I use images like and and I use action words, for example, like that that evoke maybe a certain response. So I've tried that as well. Um, or it could be the music, like now that I have these, for example, for three imaginary species, I have this music, then I can also come take that into a rehearsal and try it with a new group, for example. This is a very interesting approach that I never heard that I can also use because I would do a workshop with the circus artists and maybe with the plant and musicians also. Yeah. So with these cards that you say, I can show a fungus and then they can react to it. Or you can or I can play some sounds that you give yeah. me, for example. So, or like even with your vegetables, like you can show a cucumber or you could show, find an image of a cucumber that no one expects, you know, maybe something that shows the inside of the cucumber or something like that, you know? Oh, wow. Yeah, crazy. Cool. Um, yeah, so I have some points here for you. First question is, why is nature relevant to you as a person? Yeah, I've pers I've, I personally feel like I've always 
had a, a strong connection to nature. When I was a young boy, uh, I was out a lot in the forest. I was quite engaged in a, in a local scouting group. So I would spend a lot of time outdoors and camp and do summer camps and things like that. I guess that played a role too. Um, but also, I mean, why does it matter to me now? I think I find I find this in, really interesting about our our relationship with nature. And I mean, I, I, fi I mean, first of all, I find nature very fascinating because it's the way it works is is often mind bogglingly complex. But sometimes you also find out something that something that seems complex actually comes from something very simple, which is, I think, amazing, you know, like how ah this is like how it works. And I would love to communicate some of that to audiences. So that's my motivation as an artist is to give audiences an experience um, of the nature of nature, you could say, right? That's like a phrase I sometimes use as well. So the, the, the underlying principles of nature. But of course, also because like, I mean, there is not a square meter of land in Europe that has not in Central Europe, and particularly true for the Netherlands, I guess, that has not been influenced by humans. We have influenced all landscapes. They are, even what we consider nature are often mostly kind of forests that are used for harvest. It's not really nature in the sense of not impacted by humans. So I think that's also what something I, care, I, I want people to care about it. And of course, I also have this ideal of wanting to protect it and um, for us to find a way of coexisting with nature, giving it its space, um, so to speak. And yeah, I think that's really kind of, so I also interested in showing something about our relationship with it, because there's also this irony, right? What is nature? Are we nature as well? Because like, of course, humans are, we are part of nature. We just have now the means to have such an, a strong impact on on landscapes and ecosystems um but of course we are a part of it as well and maybe that's also something that art can help to give you a feeling about and then maybe also make you more caring about how we interact with it yeah i think our motivations are quite similar because i'm also interested in presenting to the audience nature uh, to make them aware that we should care for it and to uh, yeah nourish it, not destroy it. Because yeah, some people they don't care about it. They maybe destroy it like a small or big percentage of the population. Depends on what we are looking at. Probably yeah. if you eat meat every day, you are contributing. Could be sure. Sure. Yeah, I saw the article that you posted about the. The wildfires in uh, in Amazon or something. Oh yeah, that's a while, a while ago. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to, yeah, look everything up. Um, yeah. So um, maybe by doing a small action as an individual, we can also produce this effect that you saw and analyzed as a biologist in the in the flocks in the sky. So. I do something, you do something, that's already two people. And there are more, of course. So all these people will have an impact. And I, th I think that the, the world will be different in this year because we just started to look at these things, right? Yeah. Even in the art sector, it's it's relatively new. Yeah, it's it's I, I agree. Yeah. No, absolutely. And that's also, I think, another aspect, I guess, that I'm also interested in is is kind of community, right? And creating community and connection. Because, of course, in nature, everything is connected, not always. In, I mean, there's also a dark side, right? I mean, predation, like it's, like if you're a small animal, you have to watch out. So that's, But it, it, there is connectivity always. And I think that's, I mean, that's also what I'm interested in with this project now for the, for the research fund is networks, right? And in nature, there's lots of networks, but there's also networks between humans, right? As you just said, like, um, how can we create a network for change, for a better future, for... Um, connection between in within the arts or with the arts and other disciplines yeah i agree um now back to you i saw that you did some work in the tidelines institute in alaska oh do you know of them yeah uh, i don't know of them i just 
found about them yesterday. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so please tell me what kind of work did you do oh. there? Oh, it also involved artistic work or was this uh, scientific? It, I mean, I, I must I must be honest with something. The, the reality is because I think I've probably worked in my life more in science than in the arts. Um, it's still like, I'm, in terms of the money I make, I still do make more money from science projects, you know? So this was actually a science project. Um, but it was, we, we used it as a field base. So we actually did research on, on um, stellar sea lines and we did deterrence experiments with them because they sometimes interact with fishing boats and pick fish from hooks. And then they bite into the hooks and then they can end up with the hook in their mouth. So it's like, it's a, it's a very bad thing and they can potentially die from it. So we did a turns experiment and this is a, a line of research I've done a lot. Like, so sometimes it's beneficial to use sound to actually scare animals away from an area temporarily to prevent them from harm. So that was that experiment that we did there. But the Thailand Institute is quite interesting. They get a lot of schools groups in and there may be another chance for me to do another um uh, to do another trip there as part of that science project. But yeah, I really want to do more with that. I, I said, I think if I go again, I said I need I want to work with some of the people that are there on some artistic stuff. But the the picture that you saw that was just me like before we went out on the boat to do the field work. I just went in the forest and improvised and danced, and that was for one assignment um, for my MA basically. Yeah, lovely how you combined all these things together. It's just fascinating. And this is what I was talking to the scientist yesterday, the, to the genetician. Um, he said that we have up to 20, 25,000 genes in our human bodies. And yeah, you know about it, of course, because yeah. But I'm world. also not a geneticist, but it's fascinating, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, but it's fascinating. Yeah. And he said that we have all this DNA and um, it's basically instructions for the proteins. So all these 20,000 recipes for proteins yeah. that make the liver, the eye, and the same genes, the mice, for example, have 45, up to 45,000 genes. So uh, we as humans and also the plants and also the animals, we all have this uh, common thing, the gene. So it's, yeah. it's purely amazing because we come from the same place, from the same, I don't know, compounds arranged in different ways. And it's it's purely inspiring and you don't have enough time in your lifetime, I guess, to just explore everything. So it, it gives you a bit of a mystery, like what can I find out more? Like today I have this discussion with you and it's already like way nicer my life because I know more information. So, um, yeah, that's also my motivation. It's cool uh, with the Thailand Institute, by the way. Uh, congrats for your work. And um, yeah, I, I would be interested maybe to see artistic work uh, to be done out of the scientific work there because I think it would be like super cool. That would be nice. Yeah, no, I, I need to see like if, if there is a chance that to, to, to do it this year, like I would love to work with also with the student groups that they get there. Um, yeah, that would be great, but we'll see. Yeah. yeah, you could also do it later because what I do, I take data from anywhere, basically, and then I use it uh, as a tool to implement in my composition, in my performance. So with the research that you already have done, you can use it outside the Alaska context. You can use it to where you are now or something like that. So maybe that could help you. That's a good point. Yeah, no, that's also true. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, actually, I was curious as well. I saw on, on your um, Facebook when I had a bit of a look, you've also worked in data science, right? Or in, in graphic design? or In IT a... support. In IT support. Okay, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, I worked uh, with Python scripts. I checked about uh, yeah what the software developers did. And if they did it right, I say thumbs up. And if not, I report the errors or stuff. I did it for three years because... I had to leave because from art, you cannot leave, especially if you're doing a second bachelor. When I started yeah. the second bachelor, I started doing this for three years, but now uh, I do uh, yeah, only art because I need to transition to full-time art. So I, sure, yeah. Yeah, that is my, my hope, yeah. And do you use your coding skills as well in your art in some way? 
Yeah, a little bit. It's called visual programming. And uh -huh. I, I posted something on YouTube, I think, at some point last year. Uh, basically, it's like easier programming, this visual programming or creative coding is the same thing. So you connect some boxes that are already programmed, but the way you connect them, uh, you have to know how they work, the algorithm basically. So you connect all these parameters together. And then with this, you can map it on a hardware piece and you have all these knobs and these knobs are programmed by you and by the program itself. And then you can change the visuals. So if we beam something like a circle, yeah, we generate a circle with the pixels in the program. And then with all these knobs, we change color, we change form, we change intensity, RGB, all this stuff. So you can have a show or like a live show with this programming. So I didn't do it live, but I did it fixed. So I did all these things and I recorded it on the screen and then I coupled it with music. Ah, okay. That was like a pilot and now I know how to do it live. For example, if you do uh, a choreography or something and you need visuals, I can do that. So that's cool. That's super cool. Yeah, it's great skill. And you do that in Python or what, what do you use for it? No, it's Max MSP. Max MSP, okay. Yeah, and they also have a class here called New Media that you can take, but now you are graduating, but the guy who's teaching is uh, yeah, super fun and you can just come to the class on Zoom or something even after you're graduated or something. So if oh, you wow. want to learn that, it's cool. I And I did it here and it helped me a lot to see other works because this guy was presenting, look what you can do, what others did in Japan or in America so you can have all these aesthetic possibilities and then you can do your stuff but uh, um, yeah I think you know, I would love to explore it more in the future but that's also a side skill because I'm composer like I compose for orchestra or a band or something and this is just something in the background but sometimes I use it yeah yeah yeah, yeah sure yeah Interesting, but you were you were also saying that um, with the electricity that you that you the the footprints that you got from the plants, that you you translate that quite literally into into actual notes, like so the it in, into pitches or like and, and durations or how do you, how does it work? Yeah, so the duration is defined by the plant itself. So the duration of the spike is the duration of the note. So that's pre-assigned, yeah. and then the pitches um it's just kind of a random algorithm that i set and um the pitches just follow a scale that i put so i say we are in c major and the plant is in c major but the rhythm of the plant is ac the actual electrical biorhythm so we use that ah okay yeah yeah uh, so, so, but it, how do you assign the pitch then on the uh, on the spike? Is the spike does the spike have a itself has a pitch already? No, right? No, it no. has no pitch. It's basically going from one medium, so from one type of data, which is bio data, to uh -huh. to digital data, which is converted into zero and ones. Ah, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And and then from there, after the conversion, I can say. The cucumber will play the clarinet today. Excellent. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. yeah, I get it. So you basically work in a binary code with it. Yeah, it works by itself mostly. It's Ableton Live, you know, the program maybe. Okay. Yeah, and and then it's already converted there, and then you just assign different things or the instrument, the pitch, or you can assign like one hundred instruments per plant, and then it's like symphony. Um, yeah. you can have like 10 plants so 10 different inputs and have whatever instruments you prefer and then i can come in as a musician and say i do the sound design so i put the clarinet on you but what what kind of sound do i want i combine it maybe with some water samples or whatever i want and then the electrical spikes they just modulate the sound design that i made so the plants work with what i do basically that's also nice the, the plants modulate <laughs> modulate sound design i like that yeah 
Yeah, because they are aware of us and some plants probably, you know, it's, they don't like uh, human touch or other touch because they think we are predators or attackers yeah. and they release uh, some uh, chemicals as a defense mechanism and then they die. They, it was a study with, I think, I don't remember the species, but um, they touched it for 60 times in a week. And then the plant died. But another plant, which was hydrangea, yeah, this plant liked to be touched. So it it was okay. Uh, yeah. So the plant is also responsive to touch in a positive or negative way. Um, the plant is also aware that you are in the room, uh, and also the sounds that. Uh, that you produce, it, it is aware of that because they can see the the chemical reactions in the root system or something. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, cool. And do you do you also I'm just curious because this is actually one of the had a criti kind of criticisms I sometimes get with my practice as well is that people say oh it's too or it's too mimetic mm. you know it's too literal I'm just curious if there's an issue or if, because music is such a different medium uh, that it's so different that this is never a problem mm. or have you have you encountered this question as well about because you also use quite direct transpositions or translations right in yes i i received this criticism one time yes from, uh -huh. from a professor um and i think his input was also interesting because he say he said something like we have this data we translate it and it's very literal and it's cool but can we add more coolness to it and i said how and he said i don't know play with it improvise with it modulate it do something, yeah. put some dancers, do something. And, and then I got this idea with the ring, which is a MIDI ring. Uh -huh. and, and then the plants say something, they play the clarinet and the flute and the oboe, something like a small wind orchestra. And then with the ring, the circus artists or dancers, they can just interact with the, with the sounds because also on the ring, I assign different... Uh, values for different stuff so for example i can say when you do this with the ring the pitch go up or when you go down the pitch go down and that's for the pitch but you can have up to 10 uh, values so you can also change uh, intensity so how loud is the sound how soft is the sound so you can have the same sound basically and just by moving your hand you are already making a big difference and not being literal because this is something else on top on the literal thing yeah that makes perfect sense yeah and how how does that ring work just practically it's like a it's a it's a touch sensitive device or what what is it no but there is also something like that this is not uh sensitive to touch but i think to movement so if you ah, yeah, so it's like a um accelerometer kind of thing that it measures yes. like the v kind of uh, game thing or yeah exactly yeah we, on, on the axis x y axis and stuff yeah so it's called i think wave ring let me double check yes i can put a link for you here Okay, put it in the chat. Cool. Um, this is how it works, but there is another device which is a bit more expensive. And uh, it's a bracelet that you can wear. And then somebody else wears another bracelet, this, the same thing. And then the sound is modulated by the whole movement. So not just from the from the hand, but from the whole body. So if you move your leg and you're stationary with the bracelet, yeah. the sound also moves because it has 
a bigger range, a bigger uh, radius, this, this device. So that's cool. So they can interact with each other. For example, if I have a bracelet here and one here, and they go and, and they interact also, and so the sound changes when the dancers interact. So they play basically with their bodies. The body becomes the instrument. Yeah. This I really yeah. want to try, yeah. Interesting, yeah, great. Yeah, maybe I can also put that in the chat if you're interested. Oh yeah, please do. Yeah, there. Actually, there's also something I can send you. It's um, just because you um, you do this with plants, and this is an example of also. Um, wait, let me copy it. Yeah. Uh, wait, I copied it. This is an example of someone improvising with um, the sounds from mushrooms, but it's it's less of it's just someone playing. It's it's just the, it's a, the guy who's playing the piano is actually a guy who wrote a book, a popular book on fungi, but apparently he also plays piano. But it's nice to hear the kind of rhythm of the fungus. It's quite funny. <laughs> And the rhythm of the fungus, how is it produced? The same way as I described, or yeah, I I, I mean the rhythm of the fungus. I don't know exactly how it's being. I think you're a bit muted or something because I don't hear you. I don't know. I think you still hear me, but I don't hear you, right? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, now? Yeah, now it works. Yeah, I don't know, because I was copying something. Somehow my microphone was suddenly vanishing. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay, good. We're back. You were saying about the video. The... I don't know. It, it, yeah, it's just about, like, it, it's also, it's a pattern of rhythm that comes from, I think, the electrical signals in, in a block of fungus. <laughs> yeah, I can investigate that for sure. Yeah, yeah. sure. Great, thanks, thanks for sharing. Yeah, and I saw that you also do some workshops, right? And I saw some beautiful pictures from nature also. Uh, you are doing the same kind of thing that you do in the research uh, workshops, or is it a different thing? Uh, yeah, I the workshops. I think the the adverts for the workshops you probably saw what was. Um, an yeah, integrated assignment uh, for the masters, um, which was the, the first, and also then the continuation of that this this autumn. But I I mean because I I don't have a lot of funding at the moment. I just had a few proposals rejected again, uh, so I kind of work with a lot with student groups. Um, so these are uh, dance education students at Edinburgh University. Uh, so I, I, yeah, I mean, one way to kind of try out my ideas is by teaching workshops and for, for this project with networks, that's also what I'm planning to do. Yeah. Sounds great. Yeah. But I would love to have a group of people that I can work with more regularly. It's actually like something I really try to work on, but, um, yeah. Maybe here in the Netherlands, can you get something I like that? Yeah, I I know I don't know. It's very strange. I really I wanted to kind of do my final project as well with a mix of I thought a mix of students and community dance groups, 
because it's quite good for my practice right to have a lot of people because then you can try these kind of patterns things like and, and they really look interesting uh, but I, it's very strange. I, I, I've not made much progress in Rotterdam. I mean, I asked uh, Keith uh, about contacts and 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 not a lot of uh, people have actually gotten back to me, like from dance schools or community groups. So I, I don't know, maybe I need to be there and actually call people or st- be there in front of the door or something like that. <laughs> yes, actually, that's the case because also yeah. during the pandemic, I was one year abroad. And I try to do projects here and I actually try to pay them out of my pocket to do the projects for the homeschool assignment. Yeah. Yes. But the problem is that it's not working <laughs> because it's you need not to working. Be... No, even if you pay them because they, they want you to be here to interact with them. For example, I had a, a girl and she had to play, I don't know, some instrument for, for one assignment. And she said, well, it's not working this Zoom thing. I want you to be here and tell me, like, shout to me, what should I do? Because I don't know. And we are on Zoom and yeah, so it's not really working. And the moment I came back here, I had like 10 projects in the first month and I had like four projects for the whole year that year. It's true. So another way can be that you also investigate the people in Amsterdam because there is also a music school, there is also a theater, there is also dance and so on and so on. So uh, when you're here, just go there or also to Hague. So these three big cities here in Netherlands yeah. and you can yeah, research about this, the schools or about the professionals in the field also on Facebook. But it's not working if you are there and then you message someone on Facebook or email and then they will just not yeah take into account that much. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, I I, I was am planning to be I, I was planning to be there for my final project in in May and part of April, um, but I mean, I'm just trying to get in touch with organizations and to to see whether actually then it would be possible to do something. But but that even is already quite difficult. But yeah, I think that's interesting what you're saying. Maybe I need to just come before again and just try to meet people. <laughs> Yes, that's something that you could do. And the way to meet people, I think, is to meet with people that know other people. So maybe not necessarily you meet with the dancers, but you meet with artists. Would also work. Yeah, sure. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, but it's also cool that you you had this possibility to do it this way. That's super fine because you live in different worlds at the same time, I guess. Yeah. Oh, what is that? What's that? Something. Um, yeah, I mean, I would like to have, um, it would be great to have bit, actually a bit more opportunities like to, to try out things with groups. Um, so yeah, no, I, I think I'll try that. Like, and also maybe look Amsterdam because it's not that far, right? Amsterdam, no. Amsterdam, yeah. It's one of the disadvantages of this program. I mean, it's great as well because you don't have to properly move and you can do it part time. But it's a disadvantage as well. I feel that we're really not that well connected to the wider community, even at Codart, you know. I yeah, mean, you're literally the first person I meet outside of dance at Code Arts. Yes, that's <laughs> not very good, but uh, no. <laughs> but hey, I know some dancers, I know some people. That's cool. Okay. Have you have you been in touch with dancers from Code Arts or from Netherlands in general? Students or yeah. professionals? I, I I don't I have not even been in touch with um students from Code Arts. I advertise, I sent to one of their course organizers i sent um a flyer and one of them got back um but then she said oh i'm too busy in that around that time when the festival is so i've really not had much traction so you want to do basically a workshop with them to try some ideas yeah to try or like also possibility to maybe perform in in the in the final perform project performance your final performance Yeah. yeah 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 And you come in April? Yeah. Yeah, and the performance is in 
May. End of May. Yeah, it is possible to come like first of April or something, then it gives you more room. Yeah, I could do that, yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe I send you email of dancers or something that could work. And that would be cool, yeah, if you know some, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Or maybe you just have the workshop information ready and I just send it to them and they maybe they say, yeah, we'd love to do it or not. It's also fine, yeah. Cool, yeah. Okay, cool. Great. So, uh, yeah, we are approaching time. It's one hour here. Uh, about the Vimeo account, Vimeo uh you chose to be in different locations i see here you are with some trees in the mountains maybe here also choreographic portfolio stage performances ah uh, yeah that was in a in, in at the foothills of the highlands in scotland um but that was actually old um that's quite a long time ago um but i was i that was another phase when i was interested in the outdoors but then i always thought at that time i would always bring it back into the theater so i just used it as a projection um like some images that i or scenes that i filmed outside um but then i kind of also developed this practice of actually filming i mean doing the whole thing outside but for my final project i will bring it back into the theater um, so I, I'm, I'm meandering between the two. I, I, I like actually the idea of a performance outside or on a tree or like in some interesting place, you know, also like promenade performance I like where the audience moves from one station to the next. Um, yeah. Yeah, because that was also a question that was, that was raised in the, in the presentation that uh, we had now. Yeah. They said, can you maybe do it outside? Yeah. Yeah. yeah and logistically i'm thinking about it and it's not that easy but i think i'm getting there because i need the electricity and stuff to power stuff but yeah i think i can do with batteries yeah yeah it's uh, more it's, it's tricky right particularly with if you have a lot of technical equipment like which as is probably the case with your work right yeah a little bit yeah. Yeah. And what's your actual, what's your instrument that you mostly use? Is do you, do you mostly work with keyboard piano uh, as a starting point, or do you play other instruments as well? Yeah, I work with keyboard piano. And I don't play other instruments. I sing a lot also. Ah, yeah, nice. I, and I write poetry, stuff like that. Cool. Uh, but I mostly use my computer nowadays. I don't use the piano that much because the computer can put the score, the the blank score. And you can just write all the instruments, all the notes, and or you can produce it. I can studio produce from a laptop. So it's crazy how how far we are in 2023. And, and then it's like radio uh, level or something. It's ready to go on Spotify, Apple Music, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so just laptop. It's just my orchestrator is my instrument right now. Great, yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Good. I like it. Yeah. 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 I mean, it would also be nice if I am in the Netherlands for a bit. It would also be cool to maybe try something together, like just to, you know, with some improvised music or some, yeah, or even some of the plant scores. <laughs> yeah. 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 We, we should definitely do that. Uh, so maybe we do this workshop with your ideas and I play the music, could be awesome. Ah, yeah, sure, yeah. And then you have a break, a background and some dimension to your ideas with the music, I think. Yeah, that's brilliant. That's great, yeah. And you think you know a few dancers that might might be interested to come along to that? Yeah, could be. Um, I also know some circus artists. Also fine, you know. Totally also fine? fine? Because yeah. they, they are doing like partner acrobatics or just dancing sometimes. So it is kind of like a crossover because they they did a choreography for me, two guys, um, and and they didn't use acro skills at all. They just danced on my music. So they might be also interested. 
Yeah, that's totally fine. Yeah, this is that's also great. No, I don't mind actually. Like I I like circus as well. Yeah. Great. So April. Let's April. Good. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Yeah, sounds like a plan. Well, thanks. Thanks so much for your time. Um Thanks for being here yeah, no, for sharing you. everything. It's, uh, it's great that you reached out. You know, I was also, as me, I was really pl uh, kind of, when I was uh, in, in Rotterdam last time, which was in January, I was also almost going to write you and say, oh, can we meet? It's just the problem is these two weeks when we have intense, like... they are just are insane. And this time we had also meetings to see the venues and production discussions already for the festival. So I was just like, oh, I'm mean, just flat, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe yeah, next time. Next time, yeah, it's no problem. Uh, but also for me here, being here is like 20 things happen per day. And then in two weeks from now, I'm like on a different planet. I don't know like what happened. Seriously, it's just so fast. Yeah, looks <laughs> good. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's 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 great. but it's also good if things are happening, right? Yeah, otherwise we're just stagnating. Exactly. Yeah. Cool. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you so much. Do you say do you David or David? Or David? Yeah, David is fine. Yeah. David, yeah. Yeah, thank you. And you are Thomas, right? Thomas, yeah. Easy. Exactly. Okay. Easy. Yeah. Th okay, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Uh let me stop the recording and we are off. Three, two, one, one. stop recording.